Yes, yeah, so tip and greetings in the name of the creating force of the universe, the omnipotent being that which is greater than ourselves, who has many names. Ola Dumare in Kulukulum, Kwame Blafoshe, Mungo, Amanra Ashe. Yes, greetings to the Garvitone family, or the Garvitone initiatives, I should say. Sorry, to, it's this very disappointing for me to hear that um, those who chose to leave is leaving. I'm a Garviite. I don't live for myself. I live for our people. I do or I attempt to do what Garvey did. Garvey was able to mobilize millions of our people in the 1920s. I want you to think back to that period, even though most of us wasn't, all of us wasn't born then. And most of our parents wasn't born then. I mean, my dad was born in 1927. My children's grandmother was born in 1919. She's 101 and she's still alive. And she met Garvey. I spoke with her about it. And Garvey was able to mobilize millions of our people worldwide. If you know anything about Garvey, you would know that Garvey had the largest membership organization in the history of organizations to date nobody had a la larger signed membership he had seven million signed members worldwide Gavi never went to africa he was prevented from going to africa the enemy sought to destroy him Uva thought about assassinating him, but renegade on that because he said he didn't want to make him a martyr. They were more afraid of Garvey's philosophy dead than he was alive. So they sought to deframe him, set him up and send him to jail to destroy his organization, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. And there was a particular individual, Agent 999, who betrayed Garvey, became Garvey's best friend, and helped to destroy Garvey's movement. But they couldn't destroy Garvey's philosophy. Garvey sacrificed being a wealthy man because he was a well-educated man very well educated could have been anything could have been a multi-millionaire we had multi-millionaires africans in those days but garvey chose not to do any of those things he chose to use his skill to develop his people garvey was an icon in our history. Probably one of the greatest Africans of the last century. And Garvey had a vision for his people. He also said in his speech he'd wait 200 years, if need be, for the liberation of our African people. He said in that very same speech, would I not die a million times and go to hell for you? In anything that we do, Africans, we must remember we are the descendants of the kidnapped people. We are their descendants. And we dishonor them if all we want to do is live for ourselves. We in Garvitan, the founding members, we could have emigrated to Ghana 15 years ago. We didn't have to take that amount of land. We could have built our houses, bought our big cars, and we could live and lord it over the people. While we're living good, the people around us are struggling. That builds resentment. And there is resentment for a lot of us in Africa because they look at us as people who has come back and 
we come and behave like white people. We come and we use the people. A lot of Africans are doing that. A lot of returning Africans is going back to Africa and behaving like Europeans. And I don't mean in the context of, you know, they want a big house and things. No, no, worse than that. There's a lot of paedophilia going on. There's a lot of abusing the fact that the people don't have money or access to wealth. Because the governments rip the people off and keep them into perpetual poverty. So we, the founding members, chose not to take that road and chose and said, well, listen, let's see what we can do to help our people. So it doesn't build that resentment of us. At least they see we're doing something to help them. We have 120 children in that little school that you see we have there, for those of you that visited it. They have a higher learning rate than the government schools and the neighboring schools. They have won competitions in intellect. This is what we're trying to bring back to our people. So I'm sad to see that some of our people have left, but I wish you all the blessings from the ancestors and in whatever road you decide to take. But whatever road you decide to take, make sure you pull somebody along with you. Because this is why we're here. We're not on this planet forever. And the only thing that we're going to leave is the legacy of our, remem our memory. What we have done to assist people. I have my children and I train my children in the same philosophy. You don't live for yourself. You live for others. We are beings on this planet and we're only here on a vacation. We don't know how long our visa is stamped for Mama Earth. But we have no permanent visa here. And we must meet our ancestors when we depart here. And we need to have something to tell them. Because when you think your time is finished, your time is only begun. And you will have a longer time wherever you're going than you will have on planet Earth. Because time is infinite. It doesn't end. It's continuous. And our souls will travel to wherever it needs to go. And we will be judged by the feather of my heart. So for those of you who chose to leave, blessings to you. We're disappointed. Sad to see you leave. And it's an inclination of the hard work as an African nation of people that we need to do. We don't disagree, we don't agree, apologies, we don't agree on many things. We don't agree. And we have to remember that the mindset that we have both in the United States of America and here in the UK is the mindset of white people. White people educated us. We went to their schools, we went for their education system. And we have their mentality. And every day I get up, I try to kill a little piece of it. So now I don't say I'm educated. I say that I'm Africated. Because I seek to know about myself. And study who I am. And in America, the United States, you have the richest body of information than any African in the world. You have people that was like Dr. Ben, Ivan Van Sertema. The, these, these are late great people who studied and taught and wrote books. Chancellor Williams, Marcus Garvey was there, Booker T. Washington, Francis Chris Wilson, Del Jones, Ishaka Musa Barashango. You have a wealth of African knowledge out there. Yeah, Farrakhan. Yeah, Dr. Malachi York. People that gave information. Not all of us are perfect. But seek ye the knowledge and the knowledge will set you free. For those of you that stayed, I give thanks for you. 
because you have the vision we have to have vision people we have to have vision to go forward when we drop down we need to just get up when those europeans left europe and went to the united states it wasn't the united states of the americas they were all poor people they never have nothing but they did have a vision for what them they want for them descendants i know them run the americas brazil peru united states mexico all in place there colombia suriname them run them place there they them descendants the trump went on why escape him is the descendants of foreigners but the white man run them thing there and let me tell you no africans this them now make uno run nothing unless you run it and feed them agenda and you know see what them are do and there's a same here in the uk them now make with anybody that you see them put in a seat of power that look like we is doing feed them bidding them now do feed we bidding them are do feed them bidding we have traitors and collaborators amongst us working with the enemy to destroy the advancement of african people worldwide i have personal experience of that within my family in a campaign out here too long forgot to if you want to call me me tell you about it they look like us but they are not for us and so i say to you those of you who stayed, big up yourself. Because your names will be sung in the history of your descendants. Because together, we can make Garvey Town a beacon in the world of African life. But we just have to have the tenacity and the belief and the determination to execute it i don't know what the problem is with us as africans is the same problem we, we, we have with africans here so you're not alone we got this obsession about owning land maybe it's because we were sold and we think we need to have something the reality is that you can't own land in africa anywhere and anybody that told you can is telling you lies but you can resettle and you can live your life out as generations go and that's what we did with the project that we set up that we're 50 percent indigenous 50 percent diasporan in a hundred years time you won't tell the difference because we've all married to each other family and we're all the same and the land is ours anyway but i don't think any of us has got the capacity to think past 20 30 years and that is our problem as Africans worldwide. We don't think a hundred years ahead. And I'm going to leave you with this example. When the British forced the Chinese to lease them Hong Kong for 99 years, the saying at the time was the sun would never set on the British Empire. The Chinese man at the time knew they weren't powerful enough to fight off the British, the Yanks, the Russians, the Germans, and the French. Plus, they had problems with their cousins, the Japanese. So they lease Hong Kong to the British. But they had a plan. They thought a hundred years ahead. And they said by the time our generation reach 100 years we'll be powerful enough to get back hong kong and the rulers of china late i think was it mao si tung in the 1900s you know the philosophy he used to develop china he followed marcus garvey's philosophy so the China you see today was created on the philosophy of Marcus Mosiah Garvey. They locked China off from the world. 
the first thing that they did was start to feed their people. The second thing they did, they started to send their people around the world to learn the different technological things and advance them themselves. And then they sided with the Russians. Now China is one of the powerful forces in the world. No, not even we, the Africans, can tell them nothing. You know, see them are come down a, a, um, Africa, rub Africa from we. So we have to decide what we want to do. Do we want to save Africa from its enemies? Or do we, we want to join with the enemies to destroy our homeland? I greet you and I depart with you. Itepe, Ineke, Jea, Senebe. Divine peace. Long life, stability, and good health to all of you, whether you stay or you leave. I just thought I'd put this message in the group because you know I can text, but I'm not into the old protect. I want you to feel my essence and my sincerity. I'll take my people.